Spherical stabilization is necessary for shots where one walks around or the camera is attached to a car or any movement that might generate rapid camera jerks or other unwanted motion of the camera. 360 movies with such camera motion are very hard to watch without stabilization and Reland's stabilization process improves the watchability of such movies and gives more latitude while shooting such video. Most traditional stabilizers don't work on this type of material, and if we stabilize the source 360 videos, then when converting to rectilinear material, whether an editorial or with a 360 viewer, we never run out of pixels at the frame edges. In this tutorial, we will see how to use Reland's spherical stabilizer to stabilize your 360 VR footage in Final Cut Pro 10. As with the previous tutorials, please check the best practices in Final Cut Pro 10 doc first before starting. The first thing to notice is that we're working directly on the 360 VR footage with no additional workflow that entails projecting to cube faces. The basics are pretty simple. We create a 360 project, drop the footage in, and you'll find the spherical stabilizer within Relens. We just apply Relens to our footage. There are two kinds of tracking. I can go to the spherical stabilizer to find the options here. The points tracking option is faster, but if you're not getting the results you want, you can try the patches option, which is computationally more expensive, but might give you better results. Now I can press track. Note, there are no areas that need to be selected or points manually tracked or guided by the user at this point. You simply press the track button which analyzes the footage. Okay, we're done tracking. We can select the clip and right mouse click select show video animation to see the keyframes and choose stabilization key type. The stabilizer then uses the tracking data to transition the track data between each selected key. In other words, the frames with keys do not get stabilized, only the frames between. Often that's it, you're done, and hit render. But sometimes the auto keyframing doesn't put keys where you would like, so now we explain how you can adjust the keyframes to stabilize between frames you want instead of the auto selected keys. For example, here at frame 569, if I go to the keyframe before at frame 478 and after at frame 686 that the tracker selected, we can see that the horizon line is straighter than at frame 569. Okay, back to that horizon line and those keyframes that the tracker selected. Often what we're trying to do is select frames where the horizon line or implied horizon line, if it's not visible, is more straight than not. In any event, you can select exactly which frames you want to stabilize between. So going back to keyframe 478 and 686, you can see that the horizon line is straighter on those keyframes and therefore make good keyframes to interpolate between. But the keyframe that is set at frame 569 does not give us a straight horizon line. We will want to delete that keyframe. When adding and deleting keyframes for the stabilization key setting, make sure to set the stabilization mode to bypass so that you can see all the original frames before they're stabilized. I can make sure I'm back at 569 and delete the keyframe. I happen to know that frame 543 is more straight, so I'm going to add a keyframe there. Also, frame 609 is more straight, so I'm going to add another keyframe there. Now I'm done manually adding keyframes, so I will go back and switch the mode from bypass back to keyframed and render my result. A oh, one last note, if the auto selected keyframes are not working for you and you don't have the time to select keyframes manually, you can try the option moving average, which ignores the keys but simply smooths for the number of frames in time on either side of the current time. The way you would do that is to choose Moving Average from the pull-down menu for Stabilization Mode, and then you indicate a number here next to Moving Average. 60 is the default number, which would be 60 frames on either side, but you can experiment with that. Finally, I reminded you in the previous tutorial, but this is worthy of one more reminder. 
If you need to further orient the 360 footage, make sure to use the output tilt pan roll settings of Relens and do not use Final Cut Pro's reorient controls. This is necessary due to the way that Final Cut Pro works internally. Now let's check out the before and after. This is the before and after using the keyframe option as we set up a minute ago. You can see the difference using the spherical stabilizer. 